Today's episode of Explainiac is brought to you by Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. These were the 2010s. They were a slow descent into swirling chaos, nonstop vitriol, and boring dystopia. They were made better by two things, dunking on boomers and anime. And these are the best anime of the decade. Welcome to Explainiac. I'm Dan Casey, and on today's episode, we're gonna look back at the last 10 years and determine with scientific accuracy the very best anime of the decade. These are presented in no particular order, rather they are just the best of the best. Now I'm going to include a full version of this list, including where you can stream it or buy it on Nerdist.com, but in the meantime, just know that if you disagree with this list, you're wrong, because I consulted the top minds in the field and that's just how this type of thing works. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. The true beauty of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and its decade-spanning quest to defeat vampires, cyborg Nazis, and all manner of people with obscure music references for names isn't its exquisite animation or its beautiful men fighting brutal battles or even its bomb-ass music. It's that you truly could not predict a single plot twist if you tried. Oh, and also the fact that they have a character named Robert E.O. Speedwagon. Honestly, anime of the millennium is more like it. My Hero Academia. Now clearly Martin Scorsese's never watched an anime or else he might be singing a different tune about superhero stories. My Hero Academia is a perfect blend of earnest heroism, aspirational world building, and unforgettable characters. It's basically kind of like Marvel meets Harry Potter in the best way possible. It's the new gold standard in shonen storytelling, giving equal weight to emotional beats and ass kicking. And in a world that can so often feel hopeless, it's a shining beacon of light. Also, that shining might be from the United States of Smash. God, that shit slaps so fucking hard. Puella Magi Magica Madoka. The quintessential magical girl anime. It manages to both flip the genre on its head and feel like a solid metaphor for this whole godforsaken decade. Madoka is dark, it's daring, surreal. It'll make you think twice about the next time that someone tries to make a deal with you, especially if that someone is a small cat-like creature. Honestly, this anime is why I'm a dog person. Also, they're just better. Anohana, the flower we saw that day. Now losing a loved one affects us all in different ways, but it's much harder to move on when you find yourself plagued by visions of the deceased. And that's exactly what happens to Jinta Yadomi when his childhood friend Menma passes away. Her death left a rift in their friend group, but now they must come together once more to put her spirit to rest. And you must come together with a box of tissues to dry the inevitable flood of tears that'll be erupting from your eyes, because Jesus Christ. It's a sad one, guys, buckle up. You're gonna cry. <laughs> Assassination Classroom. Now everyone has at least one teacher that changed their life forever. And for the students at Class 3E at Kunugigoka Junior High, it's Koro-sensei. He's this giant yellow alien who gives his students a unique challenge. If they can't kill him by the following year, he's gonna destroy the planet. What follows is a surprisingly affecting series for a show that's about a giant smiley face monster teaching preteens the art of assassination, but hey, that's anime in a nutshell. You know, that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't do it again. New decade, new me. It's a good show though. One Punch Man. Now much like XL Saga did for anime in the late 90s, One Punch Man does so for today's anime. It expertly skewers, deconstructs, and makes fun of modern anime tropes. Its story of a superhero that can defeat any enemy with a single punch is laugh out loud hilarious and features some of the most badass fights ever animated. And most importantly, it brought awareness to the medical condition of having a butt chin so big they should legally require a pair of pants. That wretched little boy. The Promised Neverland. One of the most expertly constructed psychological thrillers in recent memory, The Promised Neverland is a show that sinks its claws deep into your soul and doesn't let go until its wild ride comes to a shocking conclusion. Its story of orphans slowly uncovering a terrible secret about their existence is a slow burn that erupts into a raging inferno and simply cannot be missed. It'll also make you think twice about the next time you meet a particularly precocious kid. What are they up to? What do they know? Megalobox. 
To celebrate the 50th anniversary of Ashita no Jo, one of the greatest sports anime of all time, they made another of the greatest sports anime of all time, Megalobox. It's a cyberpunk story of a junkyard scrapper fighting his way through the brutal blood sport of mech-assisted boxing. It's stylish, heart-wrenching, and beautifully animated. When you throw in a killer soundtrack, well, you have a total knockout of a series. Kaguya-sama, Love is War. Now, anime is full of romantic comedies, but unfortunately, most of them straight up chug ass and not in the way that you might be hoping. Kaguya-sama, Love is War is not only hilarious, but it'll get you genuinely invested in the romantic lives of its two leads, as they each try to outsmart the other in this emotional game of cat and mouse, as they try to get the other one to confess their love first. It's a simple concept brilliantly executed, so whatever you do, make sure you swipe right on this and you'll live happily ever laughter. <laughs> Ah, uh, Christ. Stein's Gate. Time travel stories with a genuinely dumb device to facilitate said time travel are my favorite kind of time travel stories. I mean, look, Back to the Future has that dumbass car, the DeLorean, the hot tub time machine has its titular hot tub time machine, and Stein's Gate has a microwave attached to a cell phone that can send texts back in time. No, you're not having a stroke. I said it has a microwave attached to a cell phone that sends text messages back in time. It's an unforgettable story of a mad scientist, murders most foul, and a race against time to prevent World War III. And I mean, honestly, what more could you ask for from an anime? A phone booth that some weird doctor travels around in with a bunch of interns that he recruits across the space-time continuum that lasts for more than 50 years on a publicly funded broadcast network? Now that sounds implausible. Demon Slayer. I dare you to watch one episode of Demon Slayer and not walk away impressed. Some of the slickest animation in ages anchors a heartfelt story about a young man who overcomes great tragedy to do exactly what the title promises. Slay some demons. From the meticulous monster design to its pulse-pounding battles to the earnest emotion that permeates every episode, Demon Slayer is a sterling example of what we should expect from a modern anime. Style and substance and that absolute dumbass Zenitsu. I mean, look, nothing's perfect, but hey, it's pretty close. God, that character sucks. Your name. Makoto Shinkai's star-crossed love story isn't just inspiring unexpected the rise of Skywalker fan theories, it's inspiring, period, thanks to its artistry, photorealistic art style, and grounded sci-fi storytelling. Equal parts Freaky Friday, The Lake House, High School Romance, with a twist of sci-fi added for good measure, Your Name is a beautiful journey from start to finish that'll put you through the emotional ringer. And honestly, it's all worth it. Just follow that red ribbon of fate to a fantastic film. And there you have it, folks, the best anime of the decade. Now look, I'm sure I left off your favorite series. I mean, hey, I left off a bunch of my favorites too. That's the way these things work. So I don't know, before you go off being like, well, I can't believe you didn't include this on there. Why don't you just tell me what would be on your list that seems more constructive and I'd rather read that than you being like, I can't believe this wasn't on here. Look, it's a long decade. Let's close it out on a good note. So why don't you let me know in the comments below and give me a thumbs up while you're there. Thanks again to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order for sponsoring today's episode. You play Cal Kestis, a Jedi Padawan who narrowly escaped the purge of Order 66 following the events of Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. On a quest to rebuild the Jedi Order, you must pick up the pieces of your shattered past to complete your training, develop new powerful force abilities, and master the art of the iconic lightsaber, all while staying one step ahead of the Empire and its deadly Inquisitors. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is available now on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. See.